Hey everyone, for my upcoming video game I've been working on a interactive fantasy map that is automatically generated by Stable Diffusion. So not only was this made by Stable Diffusion, but with the press of a button and about a minute of waiting an entirely new map can be generated with these different POIs, either with volcanoes or deserts or mountains or riverlands that the player can travel to, or different towns that the, the player can visit and go talk to NPCs in. And in this video, I wanted to share my technique and show a little bit of it off. So maybe you could learn something and incorporate something into your own workflow. So getting started, this was the majority of the baseline of the prompts that I used. So a lot of it was around having an empty map to begin with, with things like parchment, old paper, coastal lines. And a big trick that I learned from another YouTube video was to add in these continents into the negative prompt because it really likes generating, you know, our world map because that's what a lot of the training data is based off of. Uh, that video is this one right here by Albert Bozazon. And I'll link it down below if you want to check it out, but a lot of the prompting stuff was a great, you know, starting off point for me. But for me, I ran that prompt through a few times until I found something and I mangled it up in Photoshop and got it to the roughly the right shape and colors and things that I wanted. And I just went through and I generated a whole bunch and I picked out my favorites and I took them and I combined them all into one massive com combined image like this. Uh, but this was fairly noisy in the middle and I wanted emptiness, so I did that whole process a second time and ran through, and this is what I ended up with. And it was decent, but one of the biggest issues with this was on this edge, you can see that it kind of gradients from this tan to the blue, because all the borders aren't synchronized together. And what that ended up doing was it created these outlines on a lot of these things. And... This isn't the biggest of deals, but with the technique that I was using and a different processes, it started becoming a real problem uh, and you know causing a whole bunch of issues. So I ended up running through and generating like a hundred images with that previous uh, with this image, and I took my favorite, which was this. It's got some nice blue water and the nice clear land and the clear borders. And now this is my baseline image that all of my other baseline map images are created from. So when I then go to actually create a new map, I use this and I do image to image. And I do it two times actually, one at 512 by 512 with a decently high denoising strength. And then I run it again at 1024 by 1024 just to create this really big map. And I just run it through, I take the 512 by 512 image and I run it at 1024 by 1024 so I have the, the stable diffusion actually effectively upscaling it for me. And so this is an output example that we're going to be using to go off of. Then I need to choose where to put the points of interest because I have, in this case, I have 10 different things, six different combat worlds and four different towns. So I need to place them somewhere on the map, but I don't want to put them in the ocean or directly on the coast. So I need to, you know, go through and figure out where to place them. So the process that I used is I created another image that effectively calculated how little blue is there in each pixel. And so you can see that it really, you know, gets the land and the coast is very bright, and then the water is very dark. Uh, and then I threshold this image based on the average pixel value, and that gives me this, which is a very clean image to work on. And then I will actually erode it because I don't want to put POIs directly on the coastline, so I pull it in to do that. And then I go through and it's a little bit of a smooth brain approach, but it works. I just randomly choose pixels. If they're white and there's no other POI within 150 pixel range of it, then I place it and I go until 10 pixels are placed. Or if it goes through 5,000 iterations and hasn't placed them all, then it throws an error and tries to get from scratch. And so this is an output and this works pretty well. Uh, so I have all these POIs of where I want to place these things. I then run through and I go to the POI location and I place over this 
draw an image of mountains in this case. Uh, these were little things that I drew. And then I run through and with this mask, the circular mask of only affecting exactly where I placed it. So I give it a little bit of context around it, but I run it through an image to image and I have it, you know, generate me. And I do this for all of my different things. So we have the desert, we have the volcano, we have the jungle, we have the cave, we have the riverlands, and then we have four towns that we run through and we do this too. And so this map gets populated by these images. And you might notice that it creates this like square around them and really starts to change that because I need a high enough denoising strength to really change the icon from my, you know, terrible hand drawn icons to something that actually looks good and looks like it fits in. And so it creates these, you know, discolorations and things like that. So what I do is I run the entire map through another image to image. And so if you notice, all the stuff disappears around them, but, you know, these icons get a lot worse. These towns are really difficult to distinguish and things just get a lot worse overall. So what I do is I run through the whole process again. I will cut segments out and I will overlay my original drawing at a, you know, way lower alpha. So it's not as influential and I overlay it and I run it through another image to image. Uh, with a lower denoising strength this time, so you know we start to get it in, but you can see there's a little bit of that outline still, but it's a lot less than last time, and it really maintains the look of of all the different icons that I want. And so at the end, this gets turned into this through the whole process, and then I run it through another full image to image at a you know cut down denoising strength. So as I'm going, I'm doing less and less denoising strength. And so we get rid of the, the outlines, but they're still a little not what I want. So I run it through a third iteration, very low influence of the original uh, icon that I drew and a very low denoising strength, but it just pulls it just that inch closer to what I want without affecting the background. And so at the end, this is the kind of image that we get out. Now, the last step that I did for my interactive map, you know, this is a pretty good map to begin with. Uh, I think for a lot of people, this is what you'll want. But for my case, I wanted that interactive and I wanted that highlighting. So what I did is I took each icon because I know where they are in the map. I chose where to place the POIs. So I go to them and I cut it out and I run it through a remove background process. And then I take the alpha channel and I blur it. So you can see how, you know, it blooms up and gradients out to the edge and it's all solid white. And I do this for for each icon and I save this all along with a JSON that tells all of this information so that at the very end I can load this all into the game and when I hover over each icon they light up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, or maybe even leave a comment down below. Thank you.